One of the things that most people struggle with is when it's time to grow, right? People go from zero to one on their own, building a lifestyle business, a business that gives them the time and freedom and money to live the lifestyle they want. But then when they decide they want to get to that next level, call that one to two, that's when it takes more than just you. That's when it takes a team. That's when it takes people around you that can support business functions so that you can focus on growth opportunities. Now, the topics of how to hire and train and manage and fire, that's probably something I can teach a three-day event on, like 10 hours a day just on that from what I've learned over the past decade. But in this episode, I want to focus on where I think most people struggle. Again, most lifestyle entrepreneurs when it comes to that growth phase of bringing people on their team. And I want to give you something that I think can just, again, benefit everybody listening. So uh, specifically, I'm going to be talking about the people that you bring on to your company that come on and are like in a recurring role, right? So it could be virtual assistants assistants, which, you know, I love. We have amazing team of virtual assistants. It could be someone, if you are listening and you work, you know, in a in-person setting, it could be someone that works with you. Uh, this isn't so much relevant to hiring contractors for one-off jobs, because with that, I typically know the opportunity associated with the cost. And then also the way we choose who we're hiring for a one-off project is based on bids, company experience, and reputation. So more so, this episode is relevant for the people you bring on that are going to be working for you 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week or 40 hours a week. And the goal is to have them stay with you and your team and your company as you continue to grow. Now, the biggest thing that we're going to focus on today, because again, it's something that affects everybody, is when you're bringing these people on, especially when you're doing it virtually, which most people are now, even if you typically do work side by side, thanks to COVID. But the biggest thing that I've struggled with and that other lifestyle entrepreneurs struggle with as well is having unrealistic expectations. Now, I want to say, because I hear a lot of people say, oh yeah, people have unrealistic expectations because they think they can hire a virtual assistant that is going to run their social media and their paid traffic and be on top of customer service and do their bookkeeping. So a lot of people talk about unrealistic expectations from that angle, which definitely could be true, but it goes both ways because I also see people, and I'm guilty of this myself, hiring sometimes and having unrealistic expectations and actually not having enough of a workload and actually assigning too little. And either way, right, whatever you're giving to your new employee or freelancer, if they're a virtual assistant, what you're giving to them, if it's too much or too little, is something that they are not going to be happy with, something that's going to either lead to overwhelm or boredom. And either of those scenarios are going to lead to them not lasting at your company, either because they simply can't perform to what you wanted them to live up to, or because you're not giving them enough and they're simply bored, so they're barely even doing that minimum amount of work. Maybe they're doing something on their own. Maybe they're working for other clients. You need to find that perfect mix, that sweet spot that actually should go into a role. And that's something that, again, when you're a solopreneur and switching to, now I even have just one virtual assistant on my team, can be very hard to do. So what I recommend you do, there's three different stages to this. The first is doing their work alone before you even post a job application online, right? Before you even think of hiring someone, do their role alone. So what specifically are you hiring for? Let's just say it is you want somebody that's going to be managing your live chat and responding to support tickets via email. Okay, what you need to do when I say do their work alone is not go on your computer for the eight hours hour shift that you're hiring for and have live chat open and have email open, but then also be playing on Facebook and checking in on your ads and watching a YouTube video and, you know, reading the newest threads on Reddit. 
What you want to do is do their work alone and do it uninterrupted. Whatever that project is, whatever specifically you are hiring for, do that work alone uninterrupted. And as you're doing it, what I want you to do is make a Google Doc, right? A simple Google like Word document and write out what you're doing. Write out how you're, in this case, right? Live chats, how you're responding to different live chats. What type of questions are coming in? What frequency are they coming in? How many? If it's email tickets as well, how many email tickets are coming in? What are the questions? How are you responding to them? So document this all. Also, if anything comes up that you would need to explain to somebody that's going to be on your team, that would be hard to explain via a Slack message, like an instant message, then my recommendation is to use a tool. I think the URL to get this, let me just double check. I think it's useloom.com. And it is perfect. Just go to, uh, oh, they bought loom.com. It used to be lose, uh, use loom. So just go to loom.com. And this is a plugin you can get. You could also download it on your computer. You don't have to. I don't. I use a, a plugin they have for Google Chrome. And it puts this little button at the top. And when you click that, it records your computer screen, it can record your webcam, and it records your microphone. So as you're going through this day uninterrupted for what your new hire will do, do their work, document anything that might be a little bit complex, put the video, you can embed the videos right into that Google Doc with everything else you're doing. And then at the end of that uninterrupted, that's key, the uninterrupted day or session, however long you're gonna have the people working for, make a, lit, a list of the KPIs from that day. So live chat, right? If that's what you're hiring for. How many tickets came in? What was the time to response, right? Like how long did it take to respond to each ticket? Um, how many of them led to sales? Whatever you want this person to be responsible for, just say hypothetically, right? You hire somebody and then a month later, you see that it's taking them five minutes to respond to live chats and it's only brought in one sale, right? Well, how long should it take when you do it uninterrupted? Does it take 20 seconds? Does it lead to a 5% conversion rate from live chat to purchase? You can't just have these thoughts in your head of, oh yeah, of course that's what it's gonna be. You need to do their work alone and do it uninterrupted. So again, that's what you want them to do. Document everything and have those KPIs, have that baseline of what you were able to do when you did it alone. Now, the next step, right? You'll, you'll have this thing. You'll have all your documentation from when you're doing their job, and then you put out the job application. And I'm not going to go into the whole hiring process in this lesson because it'll take me hours. If you're a member, if you're watching this, though, or listening to this podcast, I should say, and you're a member of Dropship Lifestyle, and you want to hear me go deep into our hiring process, in Module 7 of the Dropship Blueprint, I share that. So if you're a member of Dropship Lifestyle, log into the members area, go to the Dropship Blueprint, go to Module 7 and watch my lesson on hiring. If you're not a member of Dropship Lifestyle yet, check out dropshipwebinar.com after this podcast. I'm going to link that in the description. And when you go there, you're going to get a free training from me, but I'm also going to make you a special offer if you want to enroll into my program, the Dropship Blueprint. Again, you can get that special offer by registering at dropshipwebinar.com. Now, Either way, regardless, you post the job ad, you hire somebody. You don't just assume, which a lot of people do, that this person's now hired and here's my login for live chat, here's the login for our email tickets, you know, thumbs up, good luck, have fun, right? Because their resume looked good. What you wanna do, at least the first day where they're hired, when you're training them, is do their work together, do it with them. So again, because we're all virtual now, and most likely they're not gonna be in the same location as you anyway, set up a Zoom call, go on, have a screen share where they're sharing their screen, where your webcams are on, and let's just say again, they're working a four hour shift. During that four hour shift, be there literally like I am with you right now if you're watching a video version of this. And as they're responding to live chat tickets, you're yes, you're over their shoulder watching them do it, but you're also there so you can do the work with them. So you can see where they get stuck. If it's a live chat comes in and they literally don't know where to click to respond quickly, show them. If there is a macro in your email autoresponder or your email database, I should say, where you respond to emails from, that can have a reply just pop up right away. If you're doing the work together, you can show them that. 
So you're spending this one work session or two, however many you want to do, you're doing their work together, not just staring at them do it, but you're there helping them, guiding them through, but letting them take the lead. And what that's doing is showing them that, yes, whatever our expectations are actually you know, they're possible and you're not leaving it up to them to ask questions if they can't figure something out and you're not leaving it up to them to spend two hours out of a four hour work session trying to figure something out when you can literally do it with them in two minutes and now they know that for the rest of their career at your company, okay? So phase one, do the work alone. Phase two, do the work together. Now, after that, right, after you can see they can do the job and do what, you know, you initially discussed and what you said as your baseline when you did it alone, then they're kind of off to the races, right? That's when they are now doing their work on their own. But what I have found to really help is not all the time, you don't want to be micromanaging, you don't want to be intrusive, but every once in a while, just completely randomly, let's say, you know, six weeks after they're on board, in the morning, they log in whatever, call it 8 a.m. and they're working an 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. shift. Just say, hey, you know, hope like talk to them on Slack, whatever you use for internal communications. I uh, want to hop on with you today and, uh, you know, work together, right? And look for room for improvement together and see, you know, where we're at. So um, nothing that's like pre-scheduled or anything, but let them know. And the same way you originally did that work together, you're going to do it again. And you're going to see, are they better than they were on day one when you were actually working together? You're going to see, have they figured out anything else that's creative? You're going to see, because ideally, right, because they're doing this uninterrupted work, they should be finding room for improvement. They should be beating those original baseline numbers you set because now that's their thing, right? They have like ownership of this. That is their part. So this is the time where you want to look for where they've improved or where there's opportunities to improve. And it doesn't, it shouldn't be, I should say, you just, you know, telling them, oh, do this better, do that better, do this better. It should be a chance for them to kind of show off where they're at and also provide that useful feedback that you can then use to work together to make their job even better. So, um, yeah, I hope this episode, you know, gave value to you guys. I know it's kind of a, a short one with a whole bunch crammed in, talking kind of fast because I'm excited about this. But the the whole point, the whole message really is so often as lifestyle entrepreneurs, you know, we know it's time to bring somebody onto the team. We are not, we don't have a skill set, right? It's not, we're not built to be people that are great at hiring and training and managing. So we go in there with those unrealistic expectations, whether too high or too low. And we kind of just, you know, let things happen in the background. And two months later, be like, oh, how's this even going? You know, what's going on with them? But you can be positioned so much better from day one. If you do their work originally uninterrupted and document everything, if you do their work with them together when they first come on board, and if every once in a while, randomly, you hop back on, and do their work with them to find improvement, get their feedback, and you know take everything to that next level. Uh, it's one of the the best ways that is not overly complex that can make your whole hiring process, training process, and retention of employee process a lot better and uh, a lot more beneficial for you and your new employees or team. So as always, guys, hope you got value from this podcast. If you did, be sure to leave a review, ideally on Apple Podcasts. That's where I see them. I'll post a link in this podcast description where you can do just that. And if you got value as always and you wanna know how we build stores from A to Z, the entire process, go to dropshipwebinar.com to get a free training from me. I will link that in the description as well. So thank you, appreciate you, and I will talk to you on Monday for the next episode of the E-Commerce Lifestyle Podcast. See ya.